Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I just made it to Paris. I'm here for Paris Plou and all of the great exhibits happening during this time. I honestly haven't even checked into my hotel yet. I've just hit the ground running. I'm ready to see some shows. We are in the 8th district, which is very close to some of the most famous landmarks like the Eiffel Tower, the Arc de Triomphe, the Louvre, just to name a few. And I think that gives you a little bit of an idea of the kind of gallery spaces that I'm expecting to see. And in full disclosure, I've actually never been to any of these spaces before, so you and I will be exploring them together for the first time. Our first stop is going to be Scar's Dead Gallery to see an exhibit by Jana Schroeder, who is one of my favorites. And this show is a lot of first for Jana Schroeder. It is her first solo show with Scar's Dead Gallery, and it's her first show in Paris. And these are all new works from 2023, and they really highlight a new direction that her work has taken over the past few years. If you've seen any of her works prior to 2019, she stuck to a more monochromatic color palette and she painted predominantly with oils as well as using some other materials like graphite and lead. But it was after she became pregnant with her third child that she really felt the need to shift the materials she was using just for safety purposes. So she started creating drawings with felt markers, which if you look closely at these paintings, I think you can really see influences of that in terms of the sort of the texture of the acrylic paint. It's thinner and more transparent in some areas, which reminds me of the effect that you get when pressing on a marker with various types of pressure. Another change is that Schroeder started using acrylic paint instead of oil paint, which dries much faster. And this caused her to be quicker in terms of committing to the forms she was creating and the gestures that she's capturing. She also starts exploring a more vibrant color palette. However, one thing that has not changed about her works is their kinetic energy. And I think this is thanks to the lines she creates throughout her works. She studied under Albert Olin, and you can definitely see influences of that in her work. But at the same time, she's really created a style that's unique to herself. The title of this exhibit is quite a mouthful, so I will just leave it on the screen, but it is essentially named after an optical device that is used to test the limits of human visual perception by determining the minimum exposure time needed for us to sort of visually comprehend things like shapes and colors. And that's really the theme of this whole exhibit. Schroeder is interested in investigating the visual and mental perception of the elements of art which are color, form, line, shape, space, texture, and value. Our next stop is going to be Marian Ibrahim's gallery, which is just right down the street. She opened this Paris space in 2021, I believe, but I have never actually visited before, so I'm very excited to see it. This is an exhibit of works by the Nigerian artist Peter Yuka, who's known for creating these figurative paintings that are inspired by his childhood memories of Nigeria. And these new works, they still draw inspiration from his memories, but they explore more about the concept of memory, how it's subjective and how it can really become layered and frankly patchy over time. 
The people and the scenes in these works are created from a variety of sources, just like memories are with an image or a scent. The scenes are created from archival family photos, Pinterest photos, as well as sometimes completely imagined characters. Yuko was also heavily influenced by the loss of his younger sister in 2022. So with her on his mind, many of the works are kind of centered around a strong woman figure, which I think represents the spirit of his sister. Our next stop is actually right next door and it's a very small Almian Rush space. I've been to their larger one in Lumere. I've never been to this one before and it is very tiny. I had a little bit of trouble filming the whole show so I will be doing my best to just capture things on my phone but it's a pretty unique exhibit so I definitely wanted to share it with you all. In this exhibit, Alex Israel explores some humorous parallels between his life and Pablo Picasso's, including exploring the sort of blurred lines of celebrity and artist. And this is all part of the many events and things you've probably heard about recently surrounding the 50th anniversary of Pablo Picasso's death. When you enter the show, you see these life-size cutouts of Israel and Almi and Rush and her husband, which is meant to sort of reference the commercial connection between pop culture and the art market. I mean, maybe some of you have you know, one of these at home of your favorite celebrity. The painting at the back of the wall is based off of one of the most famous photographs of Picasso, which was at his villa on the French Riviera, and it was called La Californie. And here he had a studio space, but he also had many celebrity-filled parties, thanks to the film festival that took place every year, kind of right on his doorstep. But by depicting this particular photo of Picasso, Israel is really speaking to Picasso's own icon status as Hollywood royalty, even. And he's kind of calling out how sometimes artists, you know, can also be public figures and celebrities. Israel has also scattered throughout the exhibit artifacts from Picasso's studio as well as movie props. He's really combining the two to sort of highlight the magic of Hollywood and how it can blur the lines between real and fantasy. Downstairs is a series of paintings of Alex Israel's kind of signature version of the self-portrait, which features his distinct profile. And the objects inside are inspired by the traditional subjects of Picasso's still life composition. So things like fruit and liquor bottles. But instead, Israel has swapped them out with sort of their own California counterparts. So things like the LA Times, this Malibu rum bottle, and even an avocado.
I feel like every gallery we're seeing today is a brand new visit for me, <laughs> but this isn't just my first time visiting this Hauser & Worth gallery space in Paris. It is actually everyone's because it just opened this week. Its debut exhibit is by Henry Taylor, and it features over 30 paintings, sculptures, and works on paper, some of which he actually created over the summer during a residency in Paris. During this time, he drew inspiration from all of the incredible institutions in Paris and the work of French Impressionists and Expressionists. But overall, Taylor's work is about relationships and how they impact our lives. That could be relationships with people, but also it could be relationships with objects. So if you look closely, all of Taylor's sculptures are created from collected objects like toilet paper rolls and detergent bottles. And each of these objects have a significant role in Taylor's life or routine. The paintings in this exhibit feature a variety of subjects, including his family members, friends, historical figures such as Josephine Baker, and even himself. With his primitive sort of depiction of the figures in these rich, saturated colors, Taylor's aiming to capture feelings, specifically the feelings of the connections that he's had with those that he's depicting. This was a really fun surprise. Hauser actually commissioned Martin Creed to paint the walls at the staircase and thought this was just a fun sort of nice contrast to the more traditional gallery space.
This may be one of the best things about Hauser's new space. A Fouquet is right across the street. This is a confectionery that's been around since 1852. And I will definitely be picking out some goodies to bring home with me. And I will probably get some gifts here as well. So we've now checked in and had a quick refresh and we're on our way now to Hotel Cost for lunch. It's just this really beautiful space. I love the side rooms. They have the fireplace and beautiful walls and carpets and most importantly, the location couldn't be better. It is really close to all of the luxury shops as well as what we're going to see next. As a part of the public programming for Paris Plou every year, there are sculptures kind of scattered throughout famous places within Paris. And every year there's a different sculpture that's in Place Vendôme. And this year it is a monumental wave sculpture by the artist Urs Fischer. And it's the sixth sculpture in his sort of big clay series. And this is a series where he creates hundreds of little shapes uh, made from you know one or two small pieces of clay and he does this with his hands he then chooses one to scan digitally and then he rebuilds it at this very increased scale in aluminum so this work is about five meters tall We're going to end the day at the Paris Museum of Modern Art with an exhibit that I'm so excited to share with you all. This is a huge survey of roughly 70 works created by the American artist Dana Schutz. And they start from the early 2000s up until now, basically. And I love shows like this so much because you can really appreciate how much an artist evolves over time. You can see their works over various periods right next to one another. And I always just find this really inspiring and honestly really encouraging that with hard work and dedication, you can really grow and change if you keep pushing yourself. And I think this should also be really encouraging to any artists out there watching this because her early works were good, but I think now she is great and that has taken time and clear dedication. 
If you're not familiar with Dana Schutz, she was born in Michigan and she received her BFA from the Cleveland Institute of Art and her MFA from Columbia University. She's now living in Brooklyn. And Schutz is really known for creating these large scale, really complex works that kind of straddle abstraction and figuration. And she's capturing the emotional state of people in really strange or made up situations to kind of highlight the complexities and uncertainties of modern life. So what does that mean? Some examples of this are the outcomes of political elections, how art contributes to society, anything from the resilience of man. <laughs> she really covers so many incredible deep topics within her works. In terms of like how her style has changed, some things I noticed in her earlier works that we see here is that they contain this incredible amount of detail, like even more than in her later works. They often have also a more, dare I say, cheerful <laughs> color palette. They kind of remind me of Shara Hughes' signature color palette with these really bright pinks and yellows and greens. But as the years go on, you can really not only see her color palette shift to be darker and richer, but she also starts using much heavier lines to depict her figures, which also has these really deep contrasts. I think it has this really beautiful intensity that captures the heaviness that comes with not only the kind of topic she's exploring, but also just age and wisdom. Schutz didn't start doing sculptures until a little bit later in her career, and this exhibit features seven of them. She creates them out of clay, and she sometimes uses subjects from her earlier paintings, so if any of them look familiar, that could be why. This work is titled The Arts, and it features various forms of arts, music, theater, literature, and painting. And they're kind of on this pointless 
death ride, which really makes you wonder if this is Shutt's expressing frustration as an artist around life's purpose. And there's a nice little treat right after the show. It's pretty cool. You can actually see the Eiffel Tower from this museum. And we're going to get an even better view of it as we cross the bridge. We're going to settle down for a little nightcap. And stay tuned. Please subscribe because there will be probably multiple Paris videos as well as some videos from my Italy trip as well. So you definitely don't want to miss those. So be sure to subscribe and I will see you all in my next video.